Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Abel Gray Kantoma. I'm from Greatest Design Consult. This is my WhatsApp contact. You can reach me on this number or you can call me okay on any of these numbers. Okay. Today I'm going to be showing you how to add one load and other type of load. We have the uh, partial load, we have the uniform load, and every other type of load I'm going to be demonstrating them to you uh, right away in our printer structure. Okay, so let's jump right into it. You can see um, if you have your model like this, uh, sorry, let me just delete one of this load and then I will come to uh, delete load. Once I click on delete load, and I will click on OK and I will click on yes. So I'm going to be demonstrating some of these loadings and you are going to be seeing them right away. So if I click on this beam, I want to add a load to this beam. I will right click and I will click on edit load. Now it's going to take me to the load editor. Okay. Now, uh, on getting here, most of the biggest mistakes we normally make when it comes to adding this load, I'm going to be showing you and we are going to solve that program right away. Now, if you come to word load, you can see we have a word load. Let's start with that. Uh, when we come to our word load, you can see here, all you need to do is to specify the thickness of your wall specify the height of this wall you can see uh, whatever value i input here uh, the end is actually taking place but it's different when i if i make this three meters for example and uh, i try and make this two meters you can see uh, this is going to be giving us a varied load that is this load is not actually uniform okay because their height is actually not uniform so uh in that case um i will make it three meters but the moment i change this value automatically this will take place okay and you can specify or insert the particular position where you want this uh, load to be okay so it can start at whatever uh, distance you specify okay so but i usually like this load to actually span along the entire length of this beam okay so i'm going to leave it exactly as it is uh i know most of us are already very familiar with this uh, so all you need to do is to specify uh the load okay and then if you want to add an opening which i have demonstrated in uh previous videos you can actually add an opening to this uh specify the width of your window for example if there's a window that is there or if it is a door you can just play along with this by specifying the thickness of these windows okay so the moment i type in you can see this has actually taken effect so but if you look at this from the ground here uh to this level uh uh i think it is called seal height from here to this level you can actually play around with it uh i usually like it to be 900 um okay so you can see it has gone down so for a wall of three meters you are going to be having this 900 here from here to here will also be 900 if you are using a one two by one two uh size of window okay but right now i'm deviating to uh architecture in a way but uh this is basically how to position your window you can actually change the position you can see this x direction means you are shifting this window along the x axis okay so whichever way or whichever way uh the position of this opening is you can actually place it you can play around with it and achieve that so the moment you are done with imputing and even inserting the opening of your windows you can as well specify the starting point if you are making this to start uh, that's the load should start at probably let's say 230 and then it should end at uh, whatever the end offset okay this is start offset so from here now to uh this place will be like 230 exactly you can see the information here showing here uh, at this point i can as well play around with it by saying the end offset will also be 230 for example and the moment i click on it you can see now please take a uh, very good note of this particular area i had to click on it for this load to actually reflect okay i'll take that again uh i'm going to go back 
let's say I close this. Now, there is a particular load if you discover that is not distributed to this particular beam yet. And that load is the load that is coming from the slab itself. And it's because uh, there is no slab on that particular uh, area where this uh, where is this this beam is bounded around that area there is no slab there so uh, let's close this and let's go back so that we can be able to do this uh, the right way okay so you can see this place is actually empty there is no slab and that is why we are not having uh, that is why we are not having that load. I'm going to be explaining uh, some of these things quickly so that uh, you'll be able to understand. Let me try to open my AutoCAD software so that uh, we can quickly demonstrate something to you um, that you will appreciate. Okay, so uh, I'm trying to open any of this that will not waste too much of my time. Let me open this 2023. So why is loading? fix that later um, so let's come back now let me demonstrate something quickly uh, I'm going to delete now there is something that is going to happen you are going to see either a triangular load or a tripozoidal load I'm going to be demonstrating that to you if you have been following my video on RCD 2000 I have demonstrated that before okay how you distribute the load from your slab so it will either come uh, the load loading coming from your slab it either comes as a triangular load or it comes as a tripozoidal load okay so I'm going to be demonstrating that to you uh, right away why why what is wrong okay So I'm going to be drawing like a rectangle and then in that rectangle I'm going to be displaying uh, something quickly. So let's say we have a, a rectangle, enter, okay. So if you have a rectangle like this. Uh, polar trackey select all so I'm going to look for the center here okay so what this will do for you is you are going to be having this will come in the shape of like a rectangle gonna come this way so it's going to be like this this beam uh, let me explode this if this is a beam this is also a beam that means this slab if this is a slab now okay let's say we have a two-way slab okay if this is a slab now if this is a slab which is a panel this is going to be a triangular load that is acting on this beam this is also a triangular load that is acting on this beam while this beam is going to be carrying a trapezoidal load because the shape is the shape of a like a trapezium okay so this is a triangle so it's a triangular load this is also a triangle is also a triangular load okay so this is exactly what is going to be happening here so let's say we have, uh, for example, like the shape of a square, okay? So, 
mirror so when this panel is a square that's a square shape in that case every other beam uh, in this panel is actually carrying a triangular load so what that means is that this beam here is carrying a triangular load this beam is carrying a triangular load this beam is carrying a triangular load this beam is carrying a triangular load now proto structure has done justice to that you are going to be seeing that as i'm showing you right away okay so uh let's say this beam if you look at this now ranging by eye you look at this panel you know that this panel is actually let's go to story one story one um, good now you can see this is a triangular good exactly you can even see uh, for this is a square uh, panel you can see the shape this is showing you this is triangle this is triangle this is triangle this is another triangle but when it comes to a rectangular shape that's a panel which is in a rectangular shape you can see this is a trapezium this is a trapezium this is a triangle this is a triangle so that's exactly what proto structure does for you i have explained this in total using rcd 2000 okay you can check down below the description of this video visit my youtube channel you'll find uh, videos that i have done using that uh, rcd 2000 to explain this and break it down okay um now this this beam this beam here now is going to be carrying a triangular load and i'm going to be showing you right away so if i select this beam now and i delete the load sorry uh let me let me delete it first delete load then i will demonstrate it now after deleting it i'm going to select this beam and i'll right click and i'll click on edit load if i click on edit load perfect now you can see this is showing us a triangular shape now this shape that is showing us is the shape of the slab load that is acting on this beam okay it is the shape of the slab now that is the load that is transferring from the slab now to the beam okay so if i come on one load now uh, i have this i have this let's say everything here is perfectly what i want for my workload but in case this is the first time you are coming through this the best thing is to do is to specify the thickness of the wall stick the height of the wall and then the wall unit unit width i always make reference to getting rcd 2000 um simplify reinforced concrete design by victor oyenuga okay so i will encourage you to get that book okay you can as well get it from me uh if you don't know where to get it you can actually just dm me on my whatsapp or you can place a call and you can get that book uh through me okay uh you get the original copy from me through me actually um if you edit like i explained earlier on you can actually add the opening if you want now the biggest mistake most people do is to actually allow this like this the first thing you must do is to select after inserting all of these informations you must come back here and click if you don't click it here it is actually not going to insert the load so this is where most people are actually getting it wrong okay so you can see it has been demonstrated um, how to insert that particular wall load okay so as it is right now our wall load has actually been successfully inserted inside uh, on our beam itself okay so if i click on ok now you can see that load has actually been inserted so similarly you can do for every other beam okay so if i click on edit load okay if i click on edit load uh, so uh if you come back here let's come to wall load okay let's come to our point load now there are cases where you have a pointed load acting on a beam okay there are cases where you have a point load acting on a beam 
But you know, this particular beam does not have a slab. That is why we are not seeing that triangular shape coming from the slab. Okay, so no load from the slab is being transferred to this beam. So it's not carrying any load from the slab. Okay, that is why we are not seeing that triangular shape. So it's different for a case like this. If we edit this now, edit load, you are going to see uh, good, perfect. You can see this one now is showing us a, tri a trapezoidal shape. So this is this is trapezoidal load, okay? So this is trapezoidal load. You can see the wall load. You can see the self weight. You can see uh, the load coming from the slab, okay? But another thing I want to explain to you is how to insert other loads, okay? So there are so many other load that actually may be acting on your beam, okay? So if we click on this edit load and we come to our point load. If I click on that point load, you can see the load here is acting at the support. Okay, the point load you can see this arrow pointing down is showing us at the support. Although this load has not been inserted yet, so all we need to do in order for us to insert a point load, so irrespective of what the load is, let's say for example we already know uh, the load that is acting. Here. Uh, on this particular beam it could be a a column or whatever that load could be okay so all you need to do is to insert that particular load if you know the load in kilonewton insert that load and click on this insertion point okay so if you know the position where this load is acting on now you can see by just checking this insertion point this is showing us the position at 50% so what that 50% means is that this load is acting at the center of this particular beam. Okay? So, but you can specify this distance by knowing the entire length of this beam. So if I know the length of the beam, okay? For example, if the length of this beam from here to here is 4 meters, for example. And if I want to place this thing, uh, this at, uh, at, uh, at, uh, probably like um, let's say at one fourth okay at the one fourth of this particular beam one fourth is actually one meter that's from here to here if I want to get like at one meter span for example I will have to put this at 25% so the moment I type in 25% it's going to actually drop that particular load at that uh, one fourth which is one meters distance okay uh, but if I want this to act at the center of this I'm going to make it at 50% okay so similarly for whatever span of beam that you are actually considering okay so let's say I want this now to be at 40% you are going to see the position of the point load has actually readjusted so let's say I want this to be at 20% you can see it will also readjust Okay, so you can see it has readjust to 20%. So it's similarly for every other load that you want to add. Okay, on this. So if we come to your uniform, uh, full uniform uh, load, you can as well add another uniform load. It may not necessarily be a wall. Okay, there are other loads that you probably want to add to that particular beam. Okay. So there are other loads that you probably may want to add to that particular beam. Okay, so uh, there are so many other loads. So uh, all you need to do, if you know that load, all you need to do is just to type in that information and you come back here and you click on it. Now you can see it's telling us this is the self-weight of this particular beam. So if you know the load, all you need to do, after imputing the, the value, you must come back and click on it in order for it to be inserted. Now you can see it has insert. I made a mistake by inserting it even twice. So I can delete one of it. So if I have this. Okay, still loading in the background.
Okay, it's still loading. Sorry, uh, there has been a little malfunction. Um, so I'm going to ignore it. I don't want that to come back again. Uh, so you can just simply just click on it and that load will be inserted. So uh, partial uniform load, you can as well add a partial uniform load as the name implies. Partial is probably a temporal kind of load that you may want to add to your beam because there are a lot of changes that occur when it comes to um in real life okay when it comes to real life uh either building or whatever structural member that you are dealing with okay there are a lot of uh, changes that of course you know um sometimes movement of objects and all of that so you can probably add a partial uniform load uh and subject it uh that partial uniform load to your beam okay so you can as well add that uh you can add a trapezoidal load as the name imp implies which i demonstrated is in a form of a trapezium you can actually add that type of load to your uh design all you need to do is to specify the information here you can see uh your dx uh this this is just simply telling you in form of percentage okay so you can see at uh, one we have zero because our starting point at uh, number four is also zero okay then at two we have one then at three we also have one okay so you can as well play along with this by changing some of the informations so if i let's say i have this you can as well come to your loop generator and simply just pick uh whether it's a triangular load whether it's uh, a trapezoidal load you can you can see this is a rectangular load you can as well just pick any of the load and just insert it so let's say this is the load i want to play along with uh i will just have to come here and i will insert that load okay once you insert it it comes up but you can see this is showing me zero because i did not really specify uh the necessary information that i'm supposed to type in there in order for it to actually display so uh you can see this is zero percent this is zero percent uh at, so i can just simply just specify this one this information here once i specify this information you can see it has actually come up so um that is that similarly with the way you insert your wall load uh, which we have demonstrated already before then your partial wall load as well can be inserted you can have a partial wall load okay there are probably all this partition uh, uh loads that you may probably want to act like partition walls okay uh in some places maybe probably you may want to use glass some may want to use like a plank or whatever material they are probably going to be using or whatever so uh some of this could be partially uh inserted on the building in real life okay so uh it may not really be a permanent kind of load that is there so you can as well specify all of this information in your beam okay so if you want to do all of that this is a simple way to actually add all of these loadings okay so once you add all of this load all you need to do like i said the moment you are done with inserting all the necessary information you must come back here and you click on it once you click on it then you click on okay once you click on okay and that's all now you can see this particular beam we have added so many uh, type of loading to this particular beam so if we right click now and come to uh sorry if we right click and come to um delete load for example you are going to see different type of loading that is acting on this beam so it's different for this particular beam this particular beam if i click on uh delete load you are going to see just one type of loading that is acting on this particular beam. 
but this other beam has several type of loading that is acting on it and in real life cases that could probably be the case because a lot of engineers tend to do their design just considering only the wall load so there are so many other kind of loadings that will probably maybe act on that particular beam which you probably need to really really consider because in real life these things are really really taking place in your beams okay so uh if you really really love what you are seeing just like this video make sure that you give it a thumbs up subscribe to this channel it's actually free click on the bell icon so as for you to get a notification whenever i post videos i post videos like this on a weekly sometimes on a daily just to encourage as many that actually want to have a deeper insight okay if you really want to advance in protest structure uh you can actually just register down below the description of this video you will find the link to our website where you can actually register with us where we are about to take off a comprehensive training using protest structure software i bet you you are never going to regret it so all you need to do is just to click on that link and you go through our website and you register with us thank you